Often if you're listening to someone's story and they're telling you what it is that they, they want prayer for, I mean, inwardly you can be thinking, crumbs, this is, this is a big thing. I, I, I'm not sure I can deal with this. I, I'm not even sure God can deal with this, really. And, and what I want us to do is to share something that would help us take our focus off the person's need and put our focus on the the person of well the the person of God really focusing on the father on his love for us focusing on Jesus his presence right here with us uh, and focusing on the spirit his power within us uh, and that's what I want to do uh, and I want to suggest that when we pray for people it's like bringing each of these um points of focus onto somebody. It's almost like, you know, shining light on somebody. And we begin by shining upon them the light of the Father's love. And then shining upon them the light of the, the presence of Jesus. And finally shining on them the light of the power of the Spirit that is within us. And that's what I want us to, to look at. So let's begin with this, this sense of focusing on the Father's love. Focusing on the love that the Father has for the person for whom we are praying. It's interesting. Jesus said this. He said, when you pray, say, Father. Say, Father. And I think that's not so much a, a command, you know, if, if you don't talk to Father, well then, you know, don't bother praying. But it's more, I think, of an invitation. An invitation for us to enter into the most glorious relationship there is. That of Father God and us, his beloved children. And I know that for many people, just using this word father can be a very difficult word because you know, it conjures up images of their earthly fathers. Uh, and that might not have been a very good relationship. You know, if your earthly father was um, absent or in some way abusive or unkind, that, that can affect the way that we think of God as father. We think that he as father is probably the same as our earthly fathers were. And far better, I think, rather than build our image of God from the picture of our earthly fathers, far better if what we can do is to build our image of God the Father from the, from the revelation that the Bible gives us. And that gives us such a wonderful picture of what Father God is like. There's a, a moment in John chapter 14 where um, one of the disciples says to Jesus, show us the Father. Show us the Father. You know, well, what's God really like? Tell us, what is God the Father really like? And, and Jesus' reply is lovely. What he says is this, anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. As if you want to know what the Father's like, look at me. You know, as we look through the pages of the Gospels, we see Jesus caring, loving, healing, confronting, bringing justice. That's what the Father is like. He is, he is a Father who himself is so loving. It's his heart to heal. It's his heart to forgive. It's his heart to show love, even to those who feel they are so unlovable. So when we're praying for somebody, one of the, the first things I do, and I take time over this, is to let people soak in the Father's love for them. You know, we just worship the Father for his love for this person. And as we do this, um, it benefits them in that hopefully they'll begin to relax. They'll begin to find a new confidence in his love for them. It also benefits us as prayer ministers, actually, because what it does, it takes our focus off the enormity of the problem for which we might be praying. And it puts our focus firmly on the Father, 
on his love, on his care for them. And it touches our very faith as we begin to pray. The second focus that we want to bring to prayer is to focus on the presence of Jesus. Now, of course, he is everywhere. He said, you know, where two or three are gathered in my name, there I am with them. He said, I am with you always to the very end. So he is here. But, but the trouble is, he might well be here, but I think we can miss it. And so it seems to me that when we're praying or when we're encouraging folk to come into the presence of Jesus, it's not so much um, asking him to come because he's already here. It's more about us trying to change people's focus so that they can focus on his presence and find his presence right there. And the way I do this is I, I, I love to ask a simple question. And it's this, it's, where is Jesus for you right now? Where is Jesus for you right now? In other words, he's here. How are you experiencing him? And it's interesting that just by asking that question, it gives people that opportunity to begin to focus upon him and to focus upon where that presence might be. And, and sometimes people's experience is, is quite a physical one. You know, they have a real sense of where he physically is. And I, I've seen people take his hand. Um, I've seen people embrace him because he's, he's, so, he's so there. Sometimes it's not so much a physical thing as it's that they sense his peace coming off, off him onto them. And if you think about it, he, you know, one of the titles given to Jesus is, he is the Prince of Peace, is what Isaiah says about him. And, and as folk encounter the sense of the presence of Jesus, I, I, I love to let them talk to Jesus. You know, what is it they want to ask Jesus? What do they want to say to Jesus? Because we're not the interpreters of their prayers to turn their words into something that is acceptable to God. I think we're just there to help them find Jesus. So what do they want to say to him? And it's fascinating because their problem might be really quite deep-seated. And if they were to tell us their problem, it might take them a long, long time. But when they tell Jesus directly, they can do it so, so much uh, quicker, because they know he knows. So let them talk to him. What do you want to say to Jesus? What do they want to say to him? And you know, another part of conversation really is, is, is to let Jesus speak to them. And a lot of folk, I think, feel that they're, that they're, they're not really good at hearing God. You know, other people always hear God more than they do. Well, Actually, I think we all hear God. We just don't recognize it as being God's voice. And, you know, his voice can come like a, like a spontaneous thought that comes to our minds. Or, or like a picture that, that, that's suddenly there. Or we're reminded of a Bible verse that just comes there in, into our minds. And so often this can be the, the very voice of God speaking to us. Let's take it seriously. What, what, why is he saying that to you? What's he trying to tell you through that? So it's letting folk have this direct encounter with the presence of Jesus. And the final focus, the final, if you like, spotlight we're shining onto this process of prayer it is to focus on the Holy Spirit, to focus on, I think, the power of the Spirit that is within us. You know, Paul calls us temples of his Holy Spirit. If you like, buildings set apart for the presence of the Spirit to dwell within us. And with that Spirit, there comes this amazing 
power. In his letter to the Ephesians, right at the beginning, Paul is, is talking to all of them and, and he says this, I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know. Now, you see, he's not praying that they would um, get anything new. He's not praying them to receive anything. What he's praying is that eyes be opened that they would know. And he goes on this three things he wants them to know. And it's the third that's most interesting for us. And the third is this. It's to know his incomparably great power for us who believe. And that power, he says, is the same as the mighty strength which he exerted when he raised Christ from the dead. All right, so he's not praying for more of God's power. The implication is we have this power. It, it, it's there available for us. His prayer is that we would know that this power is there for us. And so when we, when we place our hands on the sick, you know, it, it, it's, it's not just us doing that. It's not just an action on our part. What it is, it, it is a sign of the very power that's available flowing through us to them. And our words can actually be few. You know, the words of Jesus when he ministered were actually few. It, it, it's, you know, we speak healing to this condition. Or, or Jesus, bring your kingdom to, to this person. See, the, people don't need our analysis of their problems. What they need is the power of God to bring touch to them. So that's what this, this glorious ministry of healing really, I think, is about. It's lifting our eyes off people's problems, encouraging them to lift their eyes off their problems, to focus on the wonder of the Father's love for them. To focus on the reality of the presence of Jesus with them. And to focus on the wonder of this incredible power of the Spirit that's available for us who believe.